Hello, it's me, French Ted, and we are here for another episode. I ain't got a clue what episode number this one is. It'll say it in the title, it'll say it in the thumbnail, it'll say it in the banner that comes up during the matches. Um, Yeah, we are here for ECW. We are rebooking ECW in the 1990s. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a while since I've last recorded. I mean, I kind of bulk recorded a couple of episodes ahead of my holiday mistimed when the videos were coming out because in the previous video i was talking about oh over the easter weekend no the video came out after the easter weekend so yeah got my dates mixed up but i know where i'm at now uh giving you guys a couple of days to vote on who should face shane douglas at cyber slam and of course today is cyber slam and for you lucky people you're gonna have to wait until the main event to find out who will be facing Shane Douglas, or just quickly jump to the comment section in the last episode, I guess. Uh, but don't do that. Don't spoil yourself, you know. Um, yeah, not much else to say. We've got Cyber Slam. We've got some really, really good matches. The full match card is in the comment section below. Nothing else to really report on. Let's just uh, head straight to the event. Okay, and here we are. Ignore what's happening in the match at the moment. We're just going to look to the left hand side uh, i think it's the left right yeah the left um and we're gonna look at the question of the week we'll get that out of the way you guys can submit your answers down below along with anything else you want to say uh but for this episode our question of the episode or question of the week is what is your favorite championship design now i've got a couple um i'm not saying this because i'm playing an ecw series but i've always loved the kind of classic ecw world title i've always thought that looked really really cool um another one of my favorites is again the classic like the hogan era wwf world title it just looks clean i think um it's something about you know nostalgia it's a bit it's vintage you know it just looks really really cool uh, another one of mine i've got quite a few you know another one of mine is the white strap intercontinental title i mean if you don't love that title then you know you've got no taste let's be honest i am a sucker for a white strap um I'm trying to think of like a modern title like a title that's still going now that i really like i don't know that like the mainstream ones have got a little bit lazy like i think that AEW titles are a little bit ugly if i'm being honest uh the wwe ones they all just look a bit samey the current intercontinental design that um gunther has is disgusting <laughs> it really is let's be honest the nxt belts are nice i'll give them that the nxt women's and world title uh men's world title are really really nice um new japan had a beautiful world uh championship but they've since ruined it <laughs> let's be honest and the intercontinental title they had uh in you know previous years was also glorious but you know they ruined it by scrapping it um yeah the strong belts are ugly uh none of the british belts are nice i mean the progress ones are kind of unique but they're still not very pretty um yeah i mean the lucha underground gift the gods belt that's a that's a belt and a half um and then of course the big gold the world heavyweight championship you know the, the wcw world heavyweight that then became the wwe world heavyweight you know in the mid 2000s um a beautiful belt like that that belt to me screams you're a top guy um but yeah, enough about the belts. Let me know yours down below. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot to pick from, isn't there? A lot. <laughs> so yeah, the more obscure, the better, because I want to I wanna be able to look them up and be like, damn, son, that's a good looking belt. Uh, but either way, we are here for Cyber Slam, and we open the show with what we said we're going to do at every pay-per-view going forward, an FMW special match, and this one is a doozy. Masato Tanaka is the FNW Double Brass Knuckles Champion, which I believe is their biggest belt um, during this time period. And uh, yeah, he's put the belt on the line against his long-term rival, the Gladiator, also known as Mike Awesome. And what an opening match this was. Let's be honest, a four-star match quality, 83, 82. The crowd, you know, they, they're not really familiar with these guys. Well, they are, but they're also not in-game. Uh, but they seem to love it. Final score of 70, which is really, really good. Uh, major spot brought the match to another level, got the crowd on their feet, and Tanaka does successfully retain. So for these FMW matches, I don't want to dictate too much, so I'm kind of just letting, you know, the, the computer 
the AI, whoever, decide who wins. And of course, they chose for Tanaka to retain. So he gains a little bit of pop in North and uh, Latin America. And the Gladiator drops a tiny little bit. Um, these are two guys that I would love to bring exclusively to ECW. But again, while we've got the friendship with FMW, they're pretty much on our roster, let's be honest. Uh, but yeah, great opening match and a good title defense from Masato Tanaka. We then move backstage um, where Joey Styles was talking to John Cronus earlier on in the night. And John Cronus says that he is now on the hunt for a new tag team partner. So after, you know, separating from New Jack, um, he tried to go solo, but, you know, it didn't doesn't seem to be working out for him. He likes to be in a tag team. So Joey Styles with John Cronus, who has got an announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, I am joined by a man who's been turning heads with us with his unorthodox style and high-flying maneuvers. It is John Cronus. John, you said that you've got something on your mind, so tell everyone what's going on. Cronus then goes, hey Joey, you know, I've been tearing it up in ECW and causing chaos with whoever I've been against. So I've been thinking, why not take it to the next level again? Stars then goes, intriguing. What do you have in mind? Cronus says, well, Joey, it's time for the new Eliminators 2.0. And for that, I need a new partner. Someone who's just as extreme and just as unpredictable as I am. Someone who can handle the chaos and bring the fight to our opponents. So tonight, I announce that I'm officially on the hunt for a new tag team partner. <coughs> Joey Styles says, so you're telling me right here, right now, you're looking for a partner to create the new Eliminators in ECW. Cronus says, that's exactly what I'm telling you, Joey. I want someone who's not afraid to take risks, who's not afraid to bleed, and who's ready to embrace extreme. So if there's anyone backstage or in that locker room, or hell, outside of ECW, who thinks they can handle the ride, step up. Let's create some chaos together. Let's fly high, and let's show the world what it means to be extreme. So there you have it, guys. John Cronus is on the hunt for a new tag team partner to form the new Eliminators, who, of course, were a very dominant tag team um, a few years ago in ECW with Perry Saturn. So, yeah, this should be really exciting. Um, Cronus is going to be, you know, trialing partners over the next few weeks, months, however long it takes for him to find that perfect partner. Um, and yeah, lovely little promo here. 72. I'll take that. Everyone gains pop. I'll take that. Uh, but following on from this, though, we have our first ECW match of the night. It is a hardcore match between the team of Tommy Dreamer and Rhino as they take on two thirds of Triple Threat, Chris Candido and Bam Bam Bigelow. This match came about because of the chaos that ensued in that main event match against Rhino and Bam Bam Bigelow. Complete chaos. We, we went off air and they were still fighting. But Paul Heyman, before we went off air, said this needs to be settled officially at Cyber Slam. So here we are, tag team match. Let's get straight into it. 76, match of the night so far. And in a pretty good match, it is Rhino and Tommy Dreamer that get the win. Uh, there was a major spot in this match, um, as you can see. Chris Candido had a boost in his performance because of his gimmick. The intimidating presence of Bam Bam Bigelow in a match of this type, you know, just adds to that value, adds to that prestige. Bam Bam was a little bit tired by the end, but that's absolutely fine. Harley Race uh, being the agent for this one, crushing it as always. Dreamer and Rhino jumping up quite a bit in popularity, 0.4. Uh, Candido and Bigelow dropping slightly, but not too much, which is good. You know, we don't want people to drop too much. Uh, but yeah, the crowd ate this up, a 100% from the crowd. They love this kind of match, the pure chaos, the major spots always help. Uh, yeah, can't complain. Dreamer and Rhino seem to be uh, a force to be reckoned with, you could say, in the tag team division, if that's where they want to go. Candido and Bam Bam Bigelow, of course, losing the match, and, you know, they got pretty knocked up in this one, so they might not be available for the main event. Shane Douglas might have to do it alone, which is something he doesn't usually do. Uh, but three-star overall, 73, and a 76 overall. Can't complain. You know, we're averaging 70-plus. We're... <clears throat> Sorry, we're definitely hitting that threshold um, week in, week out. So, yeah, can't complain. Rhino continues his undefeated streak since joining ECW. And Tommy Dreamer seems to have made the right choice um, in, you know, instead of being a rival to Rhino, he's chosen to be a teammate. And, uh, you know, it's paying off massively. 
Following on from this match, though, we have the Dudley boys as they look to take on Spike Dudley and what would have been New Jack. However, uh, New Jack is out injured and physically cannot compete. So Spike Dudley has had to find himself a new tag team partner to take on the Dudleys. So let's jump to the next segment where Joel Gertner is introducing the Dudley boys and has a few choice words for his opponents or there the Dudley boys opponents sorry so Joel Gertner introduces the Dudley boys and here we go ladies and gentlemen boys and girls and all of you freaks in between feast your ears on the linguistic symphony conducted by the quintessential stud muffin Joel Gertner the man that puts the e in ECW and the Gert in Gertner now Speaking of things that need an introduction more than New Jack needs a therapist or Spike Dudley needs a step stool, let's talk about the duo that defines devastation. Straight out of Dudleyville, the Dudley boys, Bubba Ray, Devon, the only team that's scarier than an IRS audit and more dysfunctional than a Thanksgiving dinner at the Osborne household. But before we delve into the Dudley dynasty, let me take a moment to address that human voodoo doll the man who thinks he's got more lives than a cat, but probably fewer brain cells, Spike. Bless his heart. He's like a little ch chihuahua in the land of wolves. Spike, if intelligence were electricity, you couldn't even power a light bulb in a refrigerator. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you bring out, because Bubba Ray and Devon will be sending you first class through Dudleyville's finest tables. Oh yeah, this is a table match as well, I forgot about that. Gertner pauses just to appreciate all the words that he's saying. And, you know, Joey Styles reminds, yep, this is a tables match. Now, without further ado, let me introduce the brothers from Another Mother, the kings of chaos, the only tag team that makes marriage look like a weekend in Barbados. Bubba Ray and D. Von Dudley. These guys are going to beat you down, kick you around, and make you wish you were back in your mama's womb. So without any more delay, let's get ready to witness the Dudley boys unleash hell on earth. Take it away, boys, and may the mayhem begin. But first, although I didn't realise that was added, that must have been added before New Jack and Spike Dudley engage in a brawl. Let's ignore that, but it, it helped with the rating, so yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, ignore that top one. Uh, but a really good promo here from Joel Gertner. You know, he's a master of the mic. I'm hoping that my written promos do him justice i think i do a pretty good job um but now we wait to see who spike dudley's tag team partner is i've seen a couple of people in the comment section suggesting some names um but i've decided to go batshit crazy off the wall with this one as we introduce a new dudley boy So Spike Dudley makes his horrifying entrance with Chainsaw Dudley. He comes out waving around a chainsaw. We just hear, rim, 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 and everyone's like, what is that? As Spike Dudley is followed by a man that is just incensed. He is going crazy. He's waving this chainsaw around left and right. And Joey Styles provides some insight, but I haven't got it written down Oh no, I didn't add it to the promo. One second. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause here and we're gonna come back because I've written a promo. We're gonna read the promo. Okay, I've got it up on my phone and it's very, very small, so bear with me. So Spike Dudley makes his entrance with Joey Styles here, and Spike Dudley is about to come out now and unveil his mystery tag team partner. Who could it be? Let's find out. Spike Dudley's music hits, the crowd is buzzing with anticipation as Spike. Uh, as he pauses before he makes his way to the ring. Well, folks, the atmosphere here in the ECW arena is electric. Spike Dudley has promised us a mystery partner, and I've got to say, the curiosity is killing me. Who could it be? I mean, we know who it is, but just play along, guys. Ominous music begins to play, as out from the smoke, we hear screams and the ringing of a chainsaw, as Chainsaw Dudley makes his way to the ring. He's wearing a leather mask that conceals his face and he's brandishing a chainsaw menacingly, rushing to the ring as Spike now has to chase after him. Oh my God, you know, Joey, Joey Styles. 
Uh, what in the hell is this? A Dudley from the asylum? And he's got a chainsaw. This is insanity. He's going to take someone's head off. Spike Dudley apprehends Chainsaw Dudley, managing to calm him down a little bit as the crowd is in a mix of shock and excitement. It seems that Spike has the ability to calm him down and control the horrifying Chainsaw Dudley. The question is though, can he keep this madman in check during the match? The bell rings and Bubba Ray and Devon are now frozen in shock. The sound of the bell sends Chainsaw Dudley into a frenzy, wildly swinging his chainsaw, creating chaos. Spike Dudley again finally manages to settle Chainsaw Dudley down and the match gets underway with the chainsaw switched off and placed well out of the way of Chainsaw Dudley. Chainsaw Dudley is out of control. He's like a man possessed. I've never seen anything like this in my life. I do not envy Bubba Ray and Devon right now. They may be regretting picking on poor Spike sooner rather than later. We thought we'd seen the most extreme version of the Dudleys, but now I don't think anyone can top this. There we go. There's the promo. Now let's get straight into the match. Uh, yeah, debut of Chainsaw Dudley, the, the psycho Dudley who has come straight out of an asylum. And here we are with the match in 88. Ooh, yes, I will take that. And in a awesome, awesome match, Spike Dudley and Chainsaw Dudley get the win. There's a major spot in this match. Uh, obviously, Bubba Ray and Devon are masterful in tag team situations. Vocal crowd were in love with this match, making it even better. And yeah, the match ends with Spike Dudley and Chainsaw Dudley putting both Bubba Ray and Devon through the table. Spike, you know, not really being able to leverage um, his strength here, but using his finishing move, which I can't remember what it's called. Um, you know what it is. It's like the, the sliced bread thing, isn't it? Um, puts Devon through the table. Chainsaw Dudley, his finishing move is kind of like a choke slam, we'll say. Puts Bubba Ray through the table. And then he picks up the chainsaw post match and goes, drill it through people. But Bubba Ray and Devon manage to escape the ring while Chainsaw Dudley just, you know, cuts the table in half or something. Uh, yeah, pure chaos. Peak ECW in my eyes. Uh, yeah, we got four star, 84 match rating, 100% from the crowd, and an 88 overall. What a match. I'm very happy it paid off. And Chainsaw Dudley getting a big boost in popularity. Love that. <laughs> um, yeah, amazing. Uh, I hope you guys like Chainsaw Dudley. <laughs> Because <laughs> I, I, I toyed with so many people. And I was like, oh, I can't. Because like, I was thinking of bringing Test in and making Test a Dudley. Calling him like Testify Dudley or something. I don't know. Uh, there was a bunch of names I wanted to bring in. Like, I want to bring in Togi Makabe in soon. Because he's in like his mid-20s now. He's at the peak of like Makabe. Or just before the peak of Makabe. Um, but he didn't make sense, you know, to bring him in to support Spike. Um, really sad that New Jack got injured. But... We've got another Dudley, Chainsaw Dudley. But yeah, that's the end of this one. Spike gets the one up on his fellow Dudley boys with the help of their estranged Dudley, Chainsaw Dudley. Uh, moving on though, we've got a match which I think is much more wrestling than anything else. It is the triple threat for the ECW Television Championship. We've got Jerry Lynn, the champion, taking on Just Incredible and Al Snow. These two men, of course, earn the opportunity to face um, Jerry Lynn at our previous show. So let's just dive in and see what happens. And in a fairly decent match, um, Jerry Lynn manages to successfully retain as he pins Al Snow, just incredible, just a little bit too slow uh, to break up the pin. Uh, but aiming to steal the show, they up their game, which is really, really good. Al Snow got a boost because of his gimmick. Al Snow was also struggling by breath by the end of the match. A uh, 15, 16 minute match, not the longest, but hey ho. Um, Jerry Lynn jumps up in pop, just incredible, drops a little bit. Al Snow drops a little bit, which is fair enough. But working with Lynn and Al Snow um, gives a boost to everyone else. Uh, three and a half star, 82 match quality, which is really good. 85 reaction from the crowd and a 71 overall. I'll take it. And a good defense from Jerry Lynn, really proving that the win against Taz wasn't just because of Triple Threat's involvement. It is because, you know, he's a credible, oh, credible, huh? Uh, wrestler but just incredible does feel slightly hard done by you can see by his reaction uh post match uh um, and al snow is obviously recovering from uh the loss that he's just taken but yeah great title defense from jerry lynn 
let's uh, move swiftly on to our next match which is the number one contenders match for the ecw world tag team championship it is rob van dam and sabu against the pitbulls both of these teams have made their claim that they will be the next ecw world tag team champions and only one of them um, can get that opportunity against lance storm and chris candido so yeah let's dive straight into the match there's no promos there's nothing going on let's go straight into this and see what happens and in uh not the best match but it'll do um it is pitbull anthony durante that wins uh he rolls up sabu uh, and gets a really cheeky little win um as there was a little bit of miscommunication and a little bit of you know arguing or bickering let's say between rvd and sabu um but yeah sabu and rvd really kicked it off in this match there they definitely boosted it sabu was tied by the end of the match which you know fair enough it was a 16 17 minute match um but the explosive style and um or of both of them really really does uh lift the match but they did drop quite a bit in popularity which isn't the best um, but yeah, Pitbull, Anthony Durante, and um, Gary Wolf they have a quite a big boost. They've gone up by one. That's a big win. Maybe we should have the lower card guys get some big wins if we want to get them to grow. Uh, but either way, the crowd were into it in 88. Two and a half percent, um, not percent, two and a half star match rating um, with a 68 overall. You know, not the best. I think it's the worst match on the card so far. But, you know, I think that's because people wanted to see RVD and Sabu succeed. But post-match... Uh, we got a little bit of arguing between RVD and Sabu. So in the aftermatch of this heated tag team match, Rob Van Dam and Sabu, both visibly fatigued, stand in the centre of the ring. RVD's frustration is evident. His eyes are locked onto Sabu. Sabu, in turn, is just pacing back and forth. His body language, defensive yet defiant. RVD points accusingly at Sabu, conveying his frustration with his performance. The crowd, still buzzing from the match, are curious as to what's going to happen with this heated exchange. Sabu, agitated, raises his hand in defence, attempting to explain himself and, more importantly, calm down the young Rob Van Dam. Locked in a standoff, Sabu and RVD exchange heated glares, their expressions telling a story of frustration and miscommunication. Bill Alfonso steps in, distracts them away from this beef as uh, they make their way out of the ring shaking heads and you know keeping a fair distance between each other uh, before we head to the main event and find out who will be facing shane douglas uh, we do have a backstage promo and it is from justin credible um, as he reflects on the missed opportunity to become tv champion uh, just incredible storms backstage followed closely by chastity and jason as he uh, faces his face is contorted with frustration leaning against a graffiti covered wall because why not he glares into the camera ridiculous unbelievable he spits i should be the damn tv champion right now but no of course it didn't go my way tonight one-on-one -on -one, that title would have been mine he pauses takes a breath and composes himself before leaning in and stepping closer to the camera. But listen up, because I promise you this, Lady Luck might not have been on my side tonight, but sooner, much rather than later, fortune is going to swing in my direction. But this time, I'm not relying on old Lady Luck. I'm going to take that son of a bitch with my own hands, and I'm going to carve my own way to championship gold. And you better believe that. As he smacks the camera away, and walks off with Chastity and Jason following close behind. So yeah, nice little promo from um, Just Incredible here. He claims that he is not relying on luck or anyone else. He's going to take the opportunities into his own hands. So what does this boy have cooking? We'll have to find out. A little bit harsh with the 59, but you know we'll take it. Everyone grows in pop. That's all that matters. We now head to the main event where we find out who will be facing Shane Douglas in the main event uh, for the ecw world heavyweight championship so paul Heyman is here let's find out ladies and gentlemen the fate of our main event hangs in the balance a few weeks back i announced that there would be a fan vote to determine who will face shane douglas for the ecw world heavyweight championship well the results are in and the winner of the fan vote is None other than 
Lance Storm. The crowd erupts into a mix of cheers and boos as the amount as the announcement six sinks in. Some of the fans are ecstatic at the prospect of seeing Storm in a world title match, while others are very disappointed and being very vocal and that their favourite Taz did not win this fan vote. Heyman continues, now, 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 before we proceed any further, I do have a special request. Given the volatile nature of tonight's proceedings, I must ensure the safety and integrity of our main event championship match. Therefore, I need some assistance. Paul Heyman gestures and through the crowd, security personnel begin to make their way to the ring, ready to maintain order and, and enforce Heyman's request. Taz, I know this news may come as a huge disappointment to you, but I need you to understand that this decision was made by the fans and completely out of our hands. I'm now asking you, for the good of ECW Cyberslam and the main event, please follow these gentlemen and leave the arena peacefully to allow tonight's main event to proceed with no interference. Taz's face is a mask of rage, whereas Shane Douglas's is the picture of Smug. Taz grabs a microphone from ringside and stares down Heyman. You want me to leave? You want me to just walk away? You think you can just push Taz aside like some kind of afterthought? Just because a bunch of losers picked Lance over me? Nah, that ain't happening. The crowd begin to boo a little bit as um, as Heyman then tries to reason with Taz, but the tension in the arena is palpable. Suddenly, Taz's frustration overcomes him and he lashes out. He shoves Heyman to the mat, unleashing a barrage of strikes on the security guards who have tried to intervene as best as they can. The crowd then erupts into chaos as Taz fights off each security guard one after another, his rage fueling him as he lays waste to anyone who tries to stand in his way. Lance Storm and the franchise have already vacated the ring, and eventually Taz is standing alone in the centre of the ring, breathing heavily as he surveys the carnage that he's created around him. Heyman grabs a microphone from the commentary box and says, Taz, please, for the love of God, just go. You've made your point. Go. Taz stares down Heyman for a moment, his expression completely unreadable, but finally, with a snarl and a look of slight disappointment of, you know, what's transgressed. He tosses the microphone aside, exits the ring, disappearing through the sea of fans as the arena erupts in a mixture of shock, awe, and excitement of our main event. As Taz disappears through the crowd, Heyman gets back into the ring, a mixture of relief and concern is etched on his face. The stage is now set for our main event. Shane Douglas, our ECW World Heavyweight Champion against Lance Storm for the ECW World Heavyweight Championship. Damn, Taz was not happy about that. We're going to have to wait and see what happens um, after that. But yeah, let's just jump straight in and uh, find out what happens in our main event. Shane Douglas, Lance Storm for the ECW World Heavyweight Championship. 71, not bad, an 89% with a four, a uh, three and a half star, sorry, rating. Uh, Shane Douglas was struggling for breath by near the match. Okay, 18 minute match. And for once, a clean match. Clearly Candido and Bam Bam are doing no shape to get involved. Um, or is it that they don't see Lance Storm as a threat? But either way, Shane Douglas gets the win. And for once, it was a really clean victory. Shane Douglas showing why, you know, he is our world champion. Uh, with Lance Storm and him putting on a clinic, um, a really, really good, fine wrestling match. Of course, Francine got involved at moments, but it wasn't enough to distract away from the really good wrestling match we had. Uh, Lance Storm got a boost in his performance. Harley Race did some really good uh, heavy lifting here, but ultimately Shane Douglas does successfully retain the ECW World Heavyweight Championship. And post-match, Douglas uh, exits the ring with his belt in hand as he has met... Um, at the top of the ramp by a banged up Chris Candido and a worn out Bam Bam Bigelow ice pack in hand as they celebrate the franchise's title defence. Storm on the other hand, let's just scroll down to him, um, is left on his knees in the middle of the ring really feeling dejected after his loss. He feels like this might have been his one and only opportunity you know, to get one over the triple threat um, and become world champion. 
Um, he was so close to securing the victory at one point and making history, you could say. Um, suddenly, though, the crowd recognise what's going on and they erupt in Lance Storm chat chants as Shane Douglas and the rest of Triple Threat attempt to wave these away, trying to silence the crowd, but the echoes of Storm's name ring loud as ECW Cyberslam comes to a close. And that is the end of the show. Oh, lots of talking. Let's uh, end the show and see how we did. We would have got 73, which is amazing, but of course we're capped at 55. That's absolutely fine. But yeah, we have some really, really good moments here. No titles changing hands, but we do have new number one contenders in the Pitbulls. And we also have the debut, you could say, of, <laughs> of um, Chainsaw Dudley. I can't quite get over the fact that I've created him, but... You know, he's a real wrestler. Um, I think he's, he wrestles under Leatherface or something. But I brought him in and I've turned him into Chainsaw Dudley. So, yeah. Just going to slowly scroll. Feel free to pause if you want to read any of the promos. Unfortunately, the Spike Dudley one's not here. Um, but, yeah, everything else is here. But yeah, nice long one here. And, yeah, awesome, awesome show. I'm really happy with it. Let's end and see how we did. And what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly get to the month. See if anything cool pops up. Um, and we'll go from there. So it failed. Oh, there we go. Well, the only reason I failed the promise is because Man of Man got injured. So that's not my fault. Uh, yeah, a decent amount of money. So we remembered to actually change the crowd this time. So we actually made some good money. Um, let's just keep skipping through until, oh, there we go. End of the month. <laughs> um, and did we make money? Um, I don't know. Let's find out. Yeah, Takamish Nogo is fish at MPW. That's fine. Um, he's exclusive to someone now. I think it's WWF. Yeah, so that's absolutely fine. Um, let's go to finances. In February, we made a profit. So toning down some of the things that we had. I can't remember what we even toned down. Production note. Oh, the back office we, we toned down. And we're still growing, I believe. So let's, can we check growth, growth, growth? Growth is here. Uh, we're kind of growing, yeah. I don't understand why we dip at points. It's like we go three or four days without a match or a show and then we dip again. It doesn't make sense. Um, but either way, that is the end of this episode, I guess. We're in March, a new month. Our next pay-per-view is Living Dangerously. So we're going to start booking towards that. Of course, you've got a few things to address. Um chainsaw dudley or what's happening with that guy is he sticking around we're gonna have to find out uh cronus is obviously looking for a tag team partner uh we've also got the pitbulls with their number one contendership are they gonna you know cash that in on a tv show or are they gonna wait for the next pay-per-view event and of course taz what's happening with taz um surely his actions at cyber slam you know are not acceptable is paul Heyman gonna do anything about it we will have to, of course, wait and see until the next one. But yeah, that's it for this one, guys. Remember, answer the question of the episode. Let me know your thoughts on the pay-per-view as a whole. And um, as always, like, comment, subscribe, share, and I'll see you all in the next one. <laughs>